Hello, hello, hello. Today is Sunday, March 9, 2025. Here follows the solution by Eugen of problem 225. This is an incline, angle alpha. This is a point H. The incline is straight. We have an object here that we throw in this direction, beta, with speed v0. It goes here, bing. And the question is, what is the distance AB? The physics is trivial. But <laughs> unfortunately, the math may be difficult for some of you. There's also some trigonometry involved. So, let's read together Eugen's solutions. So, we have two functions, y1x and y2x. One is parabolic and the other is linear. The parabolic function is described by the path of the stone and the linear one by the inclined hill. The linear function is easily defined as follows. Y2x, so this is the y direction, y2x is tangent alpha times x plus h, minus ta tangent alpha. Take x equals zero, then x equals zero, then y2 is h and y2 declines and declines and declines with increasing h. That's why you have the minus tangent here. The parabolic one is not so straightforward. We need to analyze the kinematics of the stone. So he separates the whole thing now in x direction and in y direction. For the x direction, x0 is 0 x0 is 0, v0x is v0 sine beta, and there is no acceleration at all, so a in the x direction is 0. The y direction, y0 is h, v0y is v0 cosine beta, and there is an acceleration in the y direction, which is gravity, a of y is g. So here, you get a trivial result for x. x, as a function of time, is v0 t sine beta. On the right side, you get the classical equation for an object thrown in, in gravity. 1 half a t squared plus v0 t plus y0. Now, the independent variable is t. So what he's going to, to do now is very clever, and several people have also done that. So he is going to eliminate t. And he can do that because we know from this equation that t is xt divided by v0 beta. t is x divided by v0 sine beta. And so he puts that t in this equation, and he puts that t in this equation. And now he has an equation which is only an equation in x. There is no t anymore. So he writes, now that we have defined the two functions, we only need to obtain the values of x where the two functions intersect. One value we already know is x, x equals 0. So we know that, of course, at x equals 0, where the object is. Now we have to find the position when t is x divided by v0 beta. And so you see here, this is the left part now, and this is the right part now. Remember, this is this, this y2. If x is 0, 
then the y2 is 8. And so he massages the math a little further, and you now get involved in, in trigonometry. And that's pop, that was a hang-up for, for many of you. So I will just let you look at this very basic, also high school, trigonometry. No sense for me to read all that. He massages the trigonometry a little further. Cosine alpha minus beta. And then finally he comes out with this result. As he said earlier, it is largely a mathematical problem. The, the physics of this problem is really trivial. But the math, for many of you, is not trivial. And so here you see the result of AB. Sine beta is in there, cosine alpha minus beta, 1 over cosine square. He can even simplify that a little further, he says, because he knows that the sequ sequence of alpha is 1 over cosine alpha, and then you come with this result. Uh, many of you, oh no, I would say uh, maybe five or six of you have followed the exact same approach as uh, Eugen. But most of you got stuck on the trigonometry. So, was this a high school problem? Yeah, provided you had <laughs> enough trigonometry in high school. The number of people that had the final answer correct, even though it may not have been in this form, but still correct, is probably only five. All right, thank you, Eugen, for a wonderful and, as always, correct solution.